Through Eval Stories, an initiative launched by Eval Partners in partnership with the Universalia, we have asked evaluation leaders from different geographical regions, organizations, languages and cultures to share their views on what should be the priorities for the global evaluation community in the next four years. This is a wonderful opportunity to be part of uh, the 2015 International Year of Evaluation. Uh, and it's a good opportunity for reflection, I think not just for myself, but for uh, everyone in the evaluation community about where the field has been and uh, where it can go and, and perhaps where it should be, should be going. The first lesson is that uh, evaluation should respect the principle of national ownership namely that evaluation should be embedded into a national process for achieving development results. If that is achieved, uh, a greater sense of uh, utility would be gained by the conduct of evaluation. The second lesson is that uh, in evaluation should be independent, namely uh, to avoid conflict of interest. That means that an evaluation team should not have been engaged into the design or implementation of any intervention that is going to be evaluated. And the third aspect is that evaluations uh, need to identify the explaining factors, namely why an intervention succeeded or why an intervention did not achieve the expected results. The explaining factors will be achieved if you have a clear and solid theoretical framework to understand the development initiative that is being evaluated. I think that one of the most important factors in that, what I have learned, is that you have to be very transparent as an evaluator. Um, it means that you have to be very transparent in uh, in setting your evaluation questions and what you are evaluating, um, um, open about your approaches and methodologies and the data you use and the data you decide not to use and so forth. Um, it's also very useful uh, to engage stakeholders uh, at an early stage through mechanisms such as um, reference groups um, to review uh, papers and to get their inputs and to uh, and to uh, report on progress. So, so it shouldn't be only in the beginning of the evaluation and at the very end, but throughout the evaluation. It's important to make the evaluation user friendly so that the commissioners of the evaluation can use it. Fundamentally, the main reason is that uh, there's a lack of demand for uh, evaluation information in uh, planning and, uh, and also in uh, budgeting. Uh, secondly, uh, the ability to do evaluation, capacity to do evaluation was a major problem and we had to deal with that because uh, there need to be continuous capacity building. Thirdly was the availability of uh, data to do evaluation. Uh, evaluation uh, was planned and then only we are looking for data and uh, as a result of that very often the evaluations done did not bring up the type of problems that need, we needed to resolve. And I think one of the, the big challenges and lessons is for evaluation practice is how to move from a context where evaluation is seen to be really part of the donor package, part of the foreign assistance or external assistance and how can it become something which is really part and parcel of uh, national, institutional behavior, part of the process of good governance within, within a country. Um, this will then help us to really build a degree of ownership uh, around evaluation. It won't be seen as some external imposition, which is to really uh, show what was done with a certain financing, in the context of around the narrow interpretation of accountability, but it will be much more part of uh, the national processes of policy formulation, of planning, of delivery, of evaluation, and of the good stewardship, the good management of resources in countries. Uh, and I think that benefits everybody. Um, and it has its learning dimension and it has the accountability dimension. Ce dont je me rends compte, c'est que l'on a élargi énormément le champ de méthodologie pour la collecte de données. That evaluation has a strong technical component that's built on social science research. The lesson I learned is that that's probably uh, not enough. 
that social science research is a necessary uh, part of the evaluation enterprise, but there are many other parts of the evaluation enterprise as well. Uh, in, if we stay at the supply side, not only do evaluators have to be good methodologists, but they need to understand what um, are answerable questions in relatively short amounts of time. They also need to understand uh, the, uh, the nature of the evaluation enterprise, which is a, the uh, notion that evaluations are, are, are made to uh, challenge, what's, challenge and learn about what is happening so that we can make uh, and change uh, projects, programs, policies, organizations, um, and help them move into better states. Non seulement on n'évalue pas, mais bon, on met l'accent beaucoup plus sur le contrôle, sur l'audit, sur l'inspection. Et justement, le fait de privilégier ces domaines euh, qui sont voisins de l'évaluation a suscité généralement une certaine peur de l'évaluation au niveau de certains publics. Dès que vous parlez d'évaluation, les gens ne pensent qu'à l'audit ou bien au contrôle ou à l'inspection. To sum up, 2015 is an extraordinary year. The seeds for a better world in 2030 have been planted. There are great opportunities, but that also means that there are great challenges ahead. For evaluation, I think none of these challenges are easy. We will have to work together. Eval Partners is one of the platforms that brings together a very large number of evaluation professionals and uh, organizations. It is a great platform to continue this conversation and move ahead on tackling these challenges. Cette année qui marque véritablement une reconnaissance pour la profession en général et je souhaite à Eval Partner et à toutes les associations qui en font partie beaucoup de succès dans toutes les activités qu'elles auront à entreprendre. Je vous remercie. I wish you a great 2015 International Year of Evaluation.